Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm going to restore this old Stanley low angle block plane. Check it out. All right, so you can see here, this uh, this plane is pretty beat up. It's got a lot of old rust and patina on it. Um, I got it at a garage sale, and I liked the shape and the feel of it in my hand. And I'm not like an expert or anything when it comes to these things. So um, I just buy them and throw them in a drawer, and I have a bunch. So I'm planning on restoring them, and I've seen a lot of guys out there, Jay Bates and um, Jimmy DeResta, you know, who restore a lot of old tools, and they give them new life. So it's kind of what I was doing in my thought process behind this video. So you can see here, this thing's being a bitch. I can't get the front plate out. It was literally rusted in there, so I had to grab a couple tools, and I finally got it to pop. Here I'm at the um, drill press, I threw the wire wheel in it, and this is a really soft wire wheel, and I'm just getting the surface rust the best I can off of um, all the pieces that were stuck in this plane for so many years, no, not knowing you know how long it was, where it was, or you know what its past life was. So this does a pretty decent job of removing surface rust, and it gives you a good place to start from when it comes to the sanding and flattening process. So just making sure I get all the little parts and try to get them as uh, shined up as best I possibly can. I move on to a 220 grit sandpaper on this um, old school style paper orbital sander. I'm not using my Rotex or my random orbit sander. I feel like this is um, has no dust collection on it and it's just a I don't know flatter, easier surface to use. So I, I like using it for stuff like this. Um, and then I just go and try to take as much rust off as I possibly can. You can see it's um, almost immediately changing color. And um, after you bear with my shoddy camera work, uh, you can really see me start to try and bring a little bit of sheen out in this old metal. This is a fairly cost-effective and easy way to do stuff like this. If you don't have an oscillating spindle sander or belt sander, which you see a lot of videos a lot of guys have, um, you could also do this on a with some flat sandpaper on a flat surface which I'll do later when I get to the flattening part. Here's the um, front block that I was having trouble with earlier, so I just give out a little sanding on the on the sander, and then I start hand sanding the whole thing. I take the same paper off, and I get into the grooves and stuff, and you can see there a little bit of marking. Guys used to put their initials on their tools when they would go on job sites, so no one would take them, so it was pretty cool to have that pop out once I got um, down to this part. The frog on the inside is a is a spot that after doing some research you really really want to flatten you want to make sure your blade sits nice and flat against that so I get the cap off um, and I start hand sanding that and this is one of the more fulfilling parts of this build because you can really 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 get a sense of how beautiful this plane probably was when it was first made um, I start to buff it out and it just really started to pop which is which is awesome um, and then I just keep chugging along with that 400 grit and I uh, sand down as much of the rust and crud as I possibly can. That's some WD-40 there um, and it just helps me clean up as much of it as I was uh, able to get with my hands before I hit it with the blower until I start sharpening the blade. So I was having some issues getting this front plate back in, so I just hit the edges of it on the sandpaper really quick and was able to get it to fit and slide in there nicely, which was a good surprise. I uh, went and put the front adjustment knob back inside of the body to make sure it uh, threaded back in nicely, the, the set screw for the center as well as the blade adjustment knob. I put the blade inside and everything fit pretty good and it, started, it was starting to look pretty awesome and I, was, and I was really excited at this point. Now moving on to the blade, you can see there there's a gap up top and, and it wasn't 90 degrees so that was my priority here so I busted out the work sharp. Started flattening the back with the hopes that it would take enough off the front of the blade that it would uh, naturally bring itself back to 90 but after a little bit you can see that that wasn't the case. So. Um, I was going about it using a marker to see where the work sharp was actually hitting the blade and um, eventually got to where I tried the diamond stone or excuse me diamond plate which is um, an awesome product to have if you're definitely doing any hand sharpening you need to go get yourself one for multiple reasons but I can explain it in, a, in the write-up in detail on my website. Um, 
so back to the besides that you I, I use this uh, marker trick that I saw somewhere on YouTube to show me where the blade is actually being um, sharpened and it just takes a ton of time to do it like this so I realized I wasn't gonna get this bad boy back to 90 degrees unless I did some serious grinding on it and I don't have a grinding wheel that's made for metal or blades like this so I tried this and I don't think work sharp intends you to use the tool like but it got it to 90 for me so back to flattening the bottom which is extremely important when you're sharpening any blade um, I went from the coarse to the fine sides of the diamond plate and then I'll move on to some water stones it's just moving it back and forth um, and getting that to become nice and shiny and, and, and you want to really get that metal up to a, a nice sheen here I have the Veritas um, sharpening jig which is a good and awesome investment if you're doing any hand sharpening and you want to learn um, and it helps you just quickly adjust and get that perfect angle I move from there to this is a I think a 4,000 grit water stone um, which was soaking I flatten the back and then I go and flatten the primary bevel and as well as a micro bevel now if you would like me to get more into sharpening which I'm not a really great at but I can um, in another video down the line just leave a comment down below I move on to trying to flatten the entire body and um, I realize quickly on the diamond plate that this thing needed a lot of work so I move on to a coarser piece of 220 grit sandpaper on my table saw wing which is cast iron very flat um, you can also spray adhere these to a flat piece of granite, a flat piece of glass, or a flat piece of metal like this um, and set yourself up a station to do stuff like this. After that I move on to 400 grit and do the same thing. Um, it's looking pretty good. I put a buffing wheel into my drill press because I'm fancy like that and um, really <laughs> start to bring the sheen out of that cap which was uh, awesome to see nice mirror shine to it with very very minimal scratch marks and I almost got all the pitting out which is really really cool I'm just using mother's buffing um, compound which works pretty well for this and you can see it's all over my hands and I don't suggest that you throw your hands into the buffing wheel but uh, it, it's something that I just doesn't bother me really so I uh, got this thing up to a nice sheen and then it was on to putting her back together and actually cutting some wood with it so in a second here you'll see the process I go through to put it back together fairly simple uh, essentially just drop in the blade um, and then add the cap and we're good to go the knobs and everything are turning and moving nicely which was a great sign um, and I didn't lose any parts which is another great sign all right, so I'm using it on some reclaimed hemlock and pine, which is a super soft woods, which uh, should give some nice shavings. But I think I actually sharpened the primary bevel to the wrong angle. Now, like I said, I'm no expert. So if you guys have any suggestions on what you use on your low angle planes primary bevel, please leave a comment down below. Um, I'd love to know what actually works. But moving on to the edge grain, I started to get some real nice um, curls coming off here, which was awesome. So if you guys dug this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be putting out as many videos as I can this year, and I had a lot of fun doing it. You can check out a full write-up to it at johnmalecki.com. Thanks again.